Now, during last week's debate on the hate crimes bill, Republicans proposed an amendment that would exempt pedophiles from receiving the protections of that bill that offers victims of hate crimes. Now, the Democrats voted unanimously against the amendment. Here's what they said. Mr. Scott votes no. Ms. Lofgren votes no. Mr. Cohen votes no. Mr. Johnson votes no. Mr. Pierre Luisi votes no. Mr. Gutierrez votes no. Mr. Sherman votes no. Ms. Baldwin votes no. Mr. Weiner votes no. Mr. Maffe votes no. Mr. Wexler votes no. Ms. Water. Now, meanwhile, as we first reported on this program last week, one Democratic Congresswoman denounced an idea that veterans should receive any sort of protections at all. And joining me now to discuss what exactly unfolded is Congressman Steve King. He sponsored the amendment that would have excluded pedophiles from this legislation. Congressman, good to see you. Well, thanks, John. It's good to be with you tonight. All right, I, I, I want to be perfectly clear. So hate, we have a hate crimes bill, and you're saying, all right, we should exempt pedophiles. Every Democrat mm -hmm. says no, but when there is the, the sponsorship of the bill that would also include veterans that are victims of crimes because they're veterans, Democrats, they wanted them exempt, but the pedophiles in. Do, do I have that right? You have it right, Sean. They were wrong on both counts, obviously, but you have it absolutely right. And uh, on the top of that, the, the amendment that I offered to exempt pedophiles from a special protected status uh, was after Tammy Baldwin, the one of the lead sponsors on the bill, had argued that the sexual orientation special protected status in the bill only covered heterosexuals and homosexuals. So that doesn't yeah. include a pedophile, but she opposed the amendment anyway, as did all the Democrats, as you all just right, showed all right, tonight. All right, Congressman, may, um, I'm, I got to slow down here because I don't think I got this right. So the, so the Democrats voted to give special protected status to pedophiles in this bill. Yes. But when they had a chance to offer special protected status to, to veterans returning from Iraq, Afghanistan and other wars, they said no. Uh, tell me that I tell me that that didn't happen in Washington. <laughs> tell me that I'm really I got this whole thing messed up and backwards. Sean, it's surreal. Well, this is truly an Orwellian era here in the United States Congress, and um, you know, that is exactly what happened. And uh, we had uh, Ms. Wasserman Schultz argued that we don't have veterans that are being discriminated against or under any kind of a threat. Yet Congressman Gohmert said that he had been spit upon as a soldier himself. And uh, if I look back through the, for the, through the data, Foster Barton was a soldier home on leave, a, a, a wounded veteran with a Purple Heart, and he was attacked at a Toby Keith concert because because he had a t-shirt on Operation Iraqi Freedom. Wow. It does happen, and if anybody needs protection, our soldiers should have it. What was there, you know, help me out here, because I, I think I have common sense, which is, you know, all too uncommon now. Help me out, what was their rationale for, for giving the special protection to the pedophiles, but not the soldiers? What, what were they arguing in that case? <laughs> Well, their argument was that soldiers aren't discriminated against, that they aren't under threat, which isn't true, of course. And then with the argument when I offered the pedophile amendment to exempt pedophiles from the special protected status, it was, we don't need to do that because, after all, it will probably never happen. No one will ever really try to use this in that fashion. And so it is it's a specious arguments that aren't based upon anything logical or rational. And I think Socrates would roll over in his grave if he saw the level of lack of logic and rational thought that's taking place today in the United States. I, I got to be honest, it's be almost beyond the pale. I can't even believe that this could be happening because mm -hmm. I know a lot of veterans that are spit upon and bes they're besmirched, mm -hmm. they're yelled at, they're treated terribly. Now, I don't know where you stand or if you stand with me because you wanted these exemptions. Mm -hmm. I don't think we should have hate crimes legislation because, in other words, if you commit any crime of violence against anybody, we already have laws on the books, correct me if I'm wrong, that would protect you uh, from being a victim of a crime, no? Well, we do, and they called this the Matthew Shepard law, uh, but the, the people who carried out the murder of Matthew Shepard have both been sentenced each to two double life sentences in prison. Uh, they did that to avoid a death penalty. I don't know what more you can do to someone than that. I am for the death penalty. I think we should protect every individual equally, regardless of their sexuality or their proclivity or any other class of victimhood. If they're one of yeah. God's children, let's protect them equally. And when you go down the path of right. special protected status, then you end up with the sacred cows walking around the street that have another extra shield around them that actually would put the victimizers right. focus on someone else. And I think yeah. it's an unequal protection of the law that results from it, Sean. You know, and, and look, if you remember back in the 2000 campaign, the NAACP ran that, uh, that ad, the James Byrd ad, and mm -hmm. the, the daughter of James Byrd, this was a hideous, vicious, cruel murder. And the perpetrators of that violent act 
got the death penalty, or at least two of the three, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly. And, mm -hmm. and they went after George Bush politically. George Bush supported the death penalty for them. But they said, well, he didn't support the hate crimes part of it. I'm like, you can't punish anybody more than the death penalty, which, by the way, I think was justified in that case. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to understand, are we trying through, through hate crimes legislation to get into the thought process behind the crime instead of just punishing the actual crime and the actual act? Well, Sean, it is the thought. Uh, it, is, it is the thought crime, and I tried to bring this out in the markup in, before the Judiciary Committee, and I asked the specific question of the sponsors, is it, is it the perception of the perpetrator or the perception of the victim? And I got different answers, but truthfully, it's both. Now we're trying to, by law, divine what was in, head of the, in the head of the victimizer and what's in the head of the victim, who is self-alleged with their particular proclivity and would be protected by law, given the circumstances of the legislation that passed off the floor of the House of Representatives. So uh, I, I think this is a, an area of law that we should stay completely away from. I think it brings about this special protected status. And, uh, and, and I think that when, when you set up people that are, that are victim, victims, then you're dividing Dividing people, and so this is an agenda right. of the homosexual activists, and they they take this all the way through to imposing same-sex marriage on America. Right. That's another part of this end. Public affirmation is the goal. We're running out of time. Is 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 it safe to say that Democrats were willing to protect pedophiles, but not offer the same protection to servicemen and women? Is that an accurate statement? Sean, it is, it is a matter of congressional record, absolutely true, beyond any doubt whatsoever. The recorded votes are there to prove just what you've said. They, they, and on top of that, Alcee Hastings from Florida spoke on, on the rules debate, and he, he read a list of about 30 different paraphilias, um, uh, proclivities, I call them, including pedophiles, necrophilia, and a number of things that I wouldn't say on this program or any other. And he said, I think all philias whatsoever should be protected by this law. That means every perversion that you can imagine would be special protected status under the Democrats' bill that passed off the floor of the House of Representatives. I, I, amazing times we're living in, Congressman. I, mm -hmm. I hope this shocks the conscience of the American people as it shocked me when I read the story. Keep up the good work. Thanks for being with us. Thanks, Sean. Hard thing to live through. And coming up, President Obama, he's quick to cave to the demands of the ACLU and they